Qatari authorities forced trans women to remove breast tissue after arrest. Since Qatar won the right to host the 2022 FIFA World Cup, it has received criticism for its for poor treatment of migrant workers and members of the LGBT community. The Qatari government has denied all allegations regarding human rights abuses, but Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International public, published reports disputing these claims. The world knew little about the conditions of transgender Qataris until recently, when BBC spoke to two trans Qataris. Shahid, a uh, fake name or anonymized name, one of the transgender Qataris interviewed by the BBC stated that she was arrested several times and interrogated. During one of their arrests, after one of the arrests, she was forced to remove her breast tissue that had formed since she had began taking estrogen and also had to undergo conversion therapy. She described Qatar's preventative, secur preventative security department as a gang. In response to the reports and interviews of the transgender woman, a Qatari government official stated that fans, quote, from all walks of life come together in Qatar to build bridges of friendship and break down barriers of misunderstanding. I don't understand the uh, remove breast tissue. What does that, can you describe that? So this is derived from a BBC article where they interviewed two um, Qatari transgender women. And in they were talking about their experiences, what they've gone through, the abuses that they've faced from um, authorities, the tactics the authorities use. And I, I can talk about all these things if we want. But so they were interviewing this woman and she... Um, showed how they forced her to cut her hair in a very masculine style. And then as she was giving this interview, she um, like pulled down part of her shirt to reveal these scars across her chest and said that after arrest, the, the timeline of it isn't clear or like how it happened, but basically she was forced to remove the breast tissue that had been begun to form after she had been taking hormone replacement therapy that she had been, getting imported from a different country how was she forced like what was the this was not described in the reporting of the bbc so that remains like, unclear to me did they force her to like take like surgery like like how, i don't understand how, is that that's why i presume but there were they there was no reported details about how this went down like was did this I mean, I, the reason why i'm asking like yeah. sorry, because it's just so barbaric that i don't believe it like yeah, I, like yeah. i can't believe like they forced her to cut into her body and remove her breast tissue I, okay i i don't know like i said the details are not given i doubt that they made her do this to herself i don't think i mean you can't no i didn't say to herself but, obviously no that's not what i asked oh. Like whatever procedure it took, like they they're like, oh yeah, you you are forced to get this procedure to remove your breast tissue. Mm -hmm. I'm and I, I can't believe like I don't like is this verified? This was reported in BBC, and um, so yeah. you know this is all according to their reporting. Um, this, the... Why is this? Why are not people like screaming? Like, is is this like? this should be where's the trans community are they like screaming about this because it should be i saw this being reported in a lot of um lgbt media but besides that it wasn't really highlighted in the same way like when it's highlighted by mainstream media it just talks about like the general persecution that they face but not why is this not this viral specific act I this should be viral right now Guys, like, I, it, if something one tenth of as extreme as this was happening anywhere in the U.S. or Europe, the whole world would be screaming about it. Well, why is this like? When? Why is this? Where is this person a citizen of? This person is a Qatari. They're a Qatari oh, citizen. Okay, never mind. That's why people don't care, I guess. Yeah. I'm telling you, if this was happen, if this was happening to a trans American or a trans. European people would be screaming. This oh would God. be considered yeah. this would be considered trans genocide. The hell? 
Like, come on, people. Like, the, L, the one good thing about LGBT, the LGBT community, is that they know how to rile things up. They know how to protest. So yeah. can you please do that for your fellow Kateri trans person? It seems like you're needed here. Like, this should be, and I know, you know I'm pretty sure some people are doing something. Oh, but 100%. This should be viral. In fact, let me highlight the work of this one guy because there's this amazing activist, and um, he, let me find his Instagram really quickly because that's where I find his name is uh, Nas Muhammad. And give me 30 seconds, let me pull him up. He is the first openly gay Qatari. And um, here he is. You can follow him at doctor like dr dot underscore n a s s doctor nas and yeah he's the first openly gay qatari and he does really amazing activism to raise awareness about the um uh what the qatari lgbt community goes through and he has like all these campaigns that he does and um he, he does a lot of really good uh, awareness campaigns. And also one thing I think is really cool. Um, let me make this bigger so we can see this better. Um, I love this photo. <laughs> like, so here he is wearing the very traditional like Gulf Arab outfit. I can't remember the proper name for these things like the thobe and you know, the chefia on the head with the little black thing. Um, but with a giant rainbow sash across his chest, and this is amazing because for many people that come from Arab communities, they could never fathom seeing someone being so boldly Arab and boldly gay at the same time. It's, it's, yes. it's cause in many people's culture, societies, their family, community, they are raised to believe that these things are antithetical. That to be an Arab, you cannot be an Arab man and be gay at the same time. Like right. they don't belong together. So I don't know, to see this so visibly, it's so beautiful to me. And I actually saw him at the San Francisco Pride this year. And I didn't know it was him. I saw this dude walking around with the thobe and the chefia and everything in the rainbow sash through pride. And I was like, holy shit. Like I got a photo of him. I sent it to all my friends that are living in Arab countries that are gay and it made their brain explode. Um, so I don't know. I just wanted to um, highlight that. I do want to mention something that a lot of people from our community get wrong. Okay. What you're seeing without the rainbow thing, this outfit. Okay. Um, is not Islamic. Okay, this outfit is Arab. It's not a religious outfit. Okay, so a lot of people, because um, people associate Arab with Islam and anything Arabic with Islamic, there are many things that are specifically Arabic but are not necessarily Islamic. Okay, uh, so don't think like so. This this is not an Islamic outfit. There are many. Like I've noticed some ex-Muslims, Arabs, who wear this outfit. This is a specifically Arab outfit, not a specifically Islamic outfit. So, for example, if you see a mullah outfit, like an Iranian mullah outfit with the turban and the whatever they wear around their body, that is a specifically Islamic outfit, right? Or where you see the outfit of an, a Sunni, uh, you know, preacher. In a, in, a, in a mosque in Saudi Arabia, right? So in Saudi Arabia, if you see people working uh, walking around like this, that's an Arabic outfit. But if you see a preacher outfit, like there are specific preacher outfits, that is an Islamic outfit, okay? So this guy, I don't know if he's a Muslim or not, but you can't tell if somebody is wearing an outfit like that, that outfit is not going to be able to tell you whether they're Muslim or not. Or if they're Muslim, how Muslim they are. That is just that just shows that they're either Arab or they're very much into Arab culture. That's all the well, only Well, and more specifically, is. like Gulf Arab. Gulf Arab, yes. Yeah. Gulf. Yeah. Um, exactly. Gulf Arab. Yeah. So <clears throat> I don't know. Fun little cultural lesson. And I really wanted to promote the work of Dr. Nas because because Armin, you're talking about like where is the outrage over this kind of thing? Where are people talking about it? Like I see him 
calling out celebrities the most, raising awareness the most, like doing a lot. So he is one of those people like leading the charge to really raise the voices but, and fight back against the propaganda too. Like he, cause there's so much propaganda coming from the Qatari government of like, no, we don't treat gay people this way, da, 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 da. And he comes forward with evidence about how the LGBT community of Qataris, not foreigners, is actually treated. And so I think that is so important. Um, to be clear, I knew people must be doing something. What I was complaining about is that it's not to the extent that it has gone viral in a way that it would have if this was mm -hmm. like a Western thing, right? By the way, in support of LGBT, should I tell, show people my AI of the... <laughs> Thank you, I? Okay, I don't uh, know. I think it's kind of... If... It's too it might be a little problematic. You. It might be a little problematic. Wait, why? Why would that be? Pro why would that be problematic? Because it's playing upon stereotypes of what it looks like to be gay. It's not. Mm, I mean, it is part of it. If it's not all of it, it's some yes. of it. Yeah. Okay, but now people okay. are going to be curious. So now we have to show them. Okay, wait, hold on. So this is AI generated version of me if I was a queen, I think, right? So here. <laughs> so I guess this is in support of LGBT. I don't know what should I say. <laughs> this is um, for those who are wondering how this came about. This is a result of the um, Atheist Republic Persian Discord community messing with Armin. <laughs> Wait, I have, I have more. Actually. I'm saying pretty. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, oh my god! Wait, I have the old version of me. Look at this. This is me old. Uh, this is me. Uh, uh, if, Giga Chad. Giga, Giga Chad me. Uh, they made uh, the devil version of me. Mm -hmm. Um, they made hold on a, a goat version of me, a goat or a sheep. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they made a hamster, <laughs> hamster version of me. Is this a hamster? I don't know what this is. It's uh, and also, uh, I don't know if this is a baby because he still has beard. I don't know. So I don't I'm very know. uncomfortable with this creation. I don't know how to. I don't know how to classify this. <laughs> Anyways, but there's... oh my god, Mariam is saying, "Wow, that's amazing! What is this program? This is Atheist is... Republic." <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I think you used the journey AI. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is. See, it's not homophobic because Gaijin American is saying slay. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah, we have LGBT support for no, this. That's great. The um, reason, just to clarify, I'm just saying that because you know people would say that you can say. be you can be a full blown Giga Chad and be extremely gay and only be into men. Da 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 da. You don't have yeah. to be more feminine femme flamboyant whatever to be gay and that i know but present this some people... this way you're a queen da, da, da. it's homophobic and you're saying that they're not real men so i'm just acknowledging that that's the way that people feel okay and this is all in good fun and this is mainly just uh roasting armin with different versions of him in ai including as a sheep so <laughs> okay but let me let me say that that people overcorrect again okay because people say like oh you could be gay and you could be like not feminine at all okay yeah but don't deny like there are a lot of, and a lot of part a big part of the gay community are men who like to be feminine so in 100 um, so don't yeah true there are many different kind of gay people but a lot of them like to be feminine don't don't try to don't try to erase them uh but like it's good to no no make the point that not all of them are like that but don't erase the existence of the one that do like that it's a big part of the community but i i don't know um the main one that i like is this one because i notice how comfortable i am when i'm with being old 
You know what I mean? So I was like, I, I'm okay. If with I this look like this, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, okay, I am. I am. I could really. I look forward to being old because if this is fine, this is like. I can, I, I, I'm comfortable with this. I, I, can, I, I can work with this. I can work with this. Like, I, so I don't have to worry about getting old. Like, oh my God, I'm getting old. This is good. This is fine. If this is what it's going to be like. Um, Cheap version of Armin is my favorite. Or goat. I think someone said, I think it was Triash. Yeah, the goat version of Armin should be called Armin Bertiani. <laughs> 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 oh my god all right okay okay um all right hamster armin that... was a hit hamster armin wait yeah. this one this 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 yeah. guy yeah 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 that was my favorite too really yeah <laughs> I hate this guy <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> okay he looks sad. I don't know why he's so sad. I want to. I want to give him like a like a peanut or something. Like, exactly. Why, so why I like it. Okay. <laughs> 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 all right. All right. Can we clap for the next? Season? People want hamster Armin merch. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.